I'd like to call this public session to order. Um, we have a quorum, and this meeting is being webcast live and recorded. The recording or webcast may capture images and sounds of those attending the meeting. Um, the closed session topics of discussion are 2.1, recommended expulsions, 2.2, recommended suspended expulsions, 2.3, recommended review, continued expulsions, 2.4, public employee assignment, reassignment, appointment, 2.5, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, complaints, 2.6, conference with labor negotiator, 2.7, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, 2.8, conference with real property negotiators, 2.9, conference with real property negotiators, 2.10, anticipated litigation, and 2.11, public employee performance evaluation. Um, I'd also like to add under 2.4, a subsequent need item, and that would be the title of principal um, to public employee assignment, reassignment, and appointments. Can I get a motion to add that item? Okay, on a motion by Gamoy, board member Gamoy, and a second by board member Case Beer Saleno. Can I get a vote? And yeah, you can you can do it by roll call. Oh, it's, oh it, it is. We can see. That's not the ball. Sorry, board approved unanimous. <laughs> Unanimously approved. Um, item 1.5, public comment on closed session topics. General public comment on any closed session item will be heard at this time. Pursuant to board policy, the board will limit individual comments to no more than three minutes and individual topics to 20 minutes. It's recommended you begin by stating your name. Seeing no public comment, I will adjourn to closed session. I apologize, we're running a few minutes late here, but I will now convene the regular session. I'd like to welcome our student board representative, Megan Donnelly from Visalia Charter Independent Study. Thank you for being here. Alondra Moran will serve as the Spanish interpreter for this meeting. Meeting attendees who would like to listen to the Spanish interpretation of this meeting, please pick up headphones from the table located in the back of this meeting room. This announcement will now be shared in Spanish. Alondra Morán servirá como la intérprete del español para esta reunión. Invitamos a los asistentes de la reunión que deseen escuchar la interpretación al español, al español, ir por audífonos a la mesa ubicada al fondo de esta sala de reuniones. Gracias. This meeting is being webcast live and recorded. The recording or webcast may capture images and sounds of those attending the meeting. Members of the public wanting to provide public comment on items listed on tonight's agenda, we recommend you fill out the public comment form, green form, located on the table immediately outside the northeast entrance of this meeting room. Please hand the completed form to board manager Delia Smart before the item comes up on the agenda. We recommend you complete a separate form for each agenda item you'd like to comment on. Ms. Smart is sitting at the table in the back of the meeting room. There she is. A member of the public providing public comment, please use the microphone on the stand located in the front of the room. We'll now have board member Joy Naylor will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation. Okay, I'd like to report the following actions from close, taken in closed session. On a motion by board member Odo and a second by board member Case Beer Saleno, the board agreed unanimously to approve settle agreements between the district and CSEA 21 classified employees 20316, 18446, 23038, 22606, 14858, 5472, 18728, 18588, 21981, 21879, 8490, 21796, 14762, uh, 17055, 10285, 22340, 1881, 20191, 20592, 19086, and 22973. That was approved on a 7-0 vote. 
All right, now in closed session by on a motion by board member Viegas and a second by board member Case Beer Saleno, the board agreed unanimously to appoint Joanna Lauer to the position of Director of Teaching and Learning Literacy and Social Science. I think she'll be joining us via Zoom. Congratulations. Dr. Joanna Lawyer has Lauer, right? Am I saying that right? Has served as principal of Mountain View School in Goleta Union School District for the last seven years. She has also served as the instructional specialist MTSS coordinator for two years. Prior to this work, she was an assistant professor of clinical education for two years, student teacher supervisor for two years, and was the USC online gate certificate course facilitator for a year at University of Southern California. She started her teaching career in Newport Mesa Unified School District, where she taught elementary for eight years. She also taught for a year at Capistrano Unified School District. Dr. Joanna Lauer earned a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education from the University of Southern California, a Master in Science in Reading from California State University Fullerton, and a Doctorate in Teacher Education in a Multicultural Society from University of Southern California. She holds a multiple subject teaching credential and an administrative services credential. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations to Dr. Joanna Lauer. And go Trojans. <laughs> All right. <laughs> In closed session on a motion by board member Naylor and a second by board member Odo, the board agreed unanimously to appoint Alan McFarland to the position of director of visual and performing arts. Alan McFarland has served as an elementary school assistant principal for the last four years. Prior to his current role, Mr. McFarland served as the band director at Golden West High School for nine years. He also taught music at the College of Sequoias for eight years. Mr. McFarland earned a Bachelor of Arts in Music Education and Trombone Performance and a Master of Music from University of California, Los Angeles. Mr. McFarland holds a single subject teaching credential in music and an administrative services credential. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations, Mr. McFarland. All right. In closed session on a motion by board member Gaby and a second by board member Odo, the board agreed unanimously to appoint Karen Alry to the position of Director of Teaching and Learning Assessment and Accountability. Dr. Karen Alry has served as principal on special assignment for the last year. Prior to her current role, Dr. Alry served as the principal of Global Learning Charter School for six years. She also served as the principal of Royal Oaks Elementary for two years. Prior to employment with the district, Dr. Alry worked for Lindsay Unified School District, where she served as a learning director for a year and director of research and evaluation for seven years. Dr. Ari has taught for the IMPACT program at Tulare County Office of Education for 10 years. She also served as an adjunct instructor at Brandman University, Chapman University, and the University of Southern Mississippi. Over the years, Dr. Ari has served by Cell Unified and Kings Canyon Unified as a consultant, assisting with grant writing and data reporting. Prior to these roles, Dr. Ari served as a teacher for Burbank Unified School District, I'm gonna ruin this, but Enka Schools in Istanbul, Turkey, Tabuk International School in Saudi Arabia, Pixley Elementary School District, and uh, the Saikon School of Science and Conservation. Dr. Alri earned a Bachelor of Arts in Social Welfare and Scandinavian Studies from University of California, Berkeley, and a Doctorate in Education from University of California, Los Angeles. She holds a multiple subject teaching credential and an administrative services credential on behalf of the Board of Trustees. Congratulations to Dr. Alri. All right, one more. Um, on a motion by board member Case Beer Saleno and a second by board member Naylor, the board agreed unanimously to appoint Stephanie Gendron to the position of principal of Mountain View Elementary School. Stephanie Gendron has been employed with Visalia Unified School District for a total of 18 years. She started her career with VUSD as an elementary school teacher serving at Union Elementary and Hurley Elementary. In 2013, Mrs. Gendron became the principal of Hurley Elementary. In 2019, she launched Visalia's new school as the principal of Denton Elementary, where she has remained for the last five years. 
Prior to employment with the district, Mrs. Gendron taught at Hamilton Elementary School in Pasadena Unified School District for four years. She has also served as an adjunct professor for Fresno Pacific University for the Administrative Services Program. Mrs. Gendron earned a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies with a minor in English and a Master of Arts in Education from Fresno Pacific University. Mrs. Gendron holds a multiple subject teaching credential and an administrative services credential. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations to Mrs. Gendron. Okay, revision to enclosure items and adoption of the board meeting. Promise we're almost to the really good stuff. Okay, there are revised item enclosures, number 4.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 9.6, and 9.7. We have one revision to the board meeting agenda. We need to remove 9.28 from the consent agenda. We will bring this item back to a future board meeting with some needed adjustments. May I have a motion to adopt the revised board meeting agenda? Second. On a motion by board member Gamoyan and a second by board member Viegas, uh, call for a vote. Student board, Student board member um, abstains, motion passes 7 0. And now I would like to welcome um, Assistant Superintendent of Learning and Leadership, Mark Thompson, for to introduce our student performance. All right, board, before they come on in, do we want to orient yourselves out into the audience? Mr. Luna, if you want to have them come in and set up, that would be fine. And as they're coming in and setting up, so tonight I know we have many great things going on, but this actually gets to start it off right. Um, for many of us that maybe aren't at every single board meeting, um, you're missing out. One, you're welcome to come to all of our board meetings. But two, we start every board meeting with student performances to honor the amazing work that's happening in, in our schools. And so tonight we have the privilege of having LDM Monte um, advanced orchestra here tonight under the direction of Ricky Avila and Tori Scratford. And tonight they're gonna to be providing the musical uh, selection, American Sketches. Let's give them a big round of applause.
thank you for sharing your talents with us tonight and the many, many, many years of practice they did. And to the parents, they didn't sound like this to start off. There's a lot of squeaking that probably happened at the house. So thank you so much for your commitment. Let's give one more big hand for our students and the parents that came with them tonight. Students, if you guys want to head out that way, you can follow Mr. Ava. Any parents at this time, you're welcome to stay. But if you are with this group and want to head out and take pictures with them or anything like that, feel free to do so at this time. You can follow them out. And I know they've left, but that really was amazing. We have an amazing, not only VAPA program, but geez, that performance. Um, I'd now like uh, to turn it over to Superintendent um, Schramm for recognition of the 2024 VUSD Employees of the Year. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, President Gaby, board members. Obviously, a night of celebration as we recognize some of our finest in VUSD tonight. And I know they would they would be the first to say we're here because of the amazing teams and support staff and family. And so I want to give a shout out to uh, all of our staff members, family members and others that are here tonight to recognize our employees of the year. So each year we district staff is invited to submit nominations for employee of the year awards from those nominated. One staff member is identified per category. Those categories are school employee of the year outstanding teacher of the year from each level, elementary, middle, and high, and then administrator of the year. The VUSD Employees of the Year awards have been longstanding tradition, and tonight I'm proud to introduce to you our 2024 VUSD Employees of the Year. So let's give them all a big round of applause. We will uh, recognize each one of you individually. We'll, we'll call you up. Uh, those that would like to speak will have that opportunity, but there's no pressure. You don't have to. Um, and then uh, we'll present you with your plaque. We'll do a photo with the board. And then if you have family or staff that you'd like to be in the photo, we'll do that too. And then we'll move on to the next employee. So just for our board to know, you'll come down uh, four times for um, our uh, employees tonight. So beginning with school employee of the year. This employee is more than an administrative assistant. She's the heartbeat of her school. She consistently goes above and beyond to support teachers, staff, parents, and students alike. Board and community, I'm pleased and honored to introduce Ms. Lisa Kruger as our VUSD's Classified School Employee of the Year. Lisa, please come up and accept your award. Now, just for uh, purposes, just for folks to know, we will do a short recess after we introduce all of our employees of the year. So uh, there'll be some cookies and some other things right outside the boardroom. So everybody will have a few minutes to uh, do some additional celebrations and photos uh, if they would like. So next, moving on to our elementary school teacher of the year. This teacher follows the curriculum with fidelity, but is also creative when it comes to intervening for her students 
who may not have completely mastered the standard and enriches those who need the extra challenge. Our elementary school teacher of the year is Miss Jeannie Alburn. Jeannie, please come up. Congratulations. And invite you to say a few words and then and then we'll do photos. No pressure though. No pressure. I just want to say thank you so much for this award. It's such an honor. I was completely shocked when Matt Shin and Sonia and a couple of staff members came in. I thought, oh my gosh, they're here to, for a foundations lesson. I hadn't started it yet. I have been a teacher for 35 years, 28 years in kindergarten, so they can't get rid of me. Um, I love being a kindergarten teacher. I want kids to come in and feel like they're part of a family. I want them to feel like they matter. I want them to come in and say, wow, this is the best day ever, Mrs. Auburn. Um, I love my staff. I love my kinder crew. And I just want to say thank you again. It's such an honor. And thank you to my family and friends who are here to support me tonight. I'll have you take the quick step to your right. Yeah, there you go. And then everybody else can take that. There you go. Step to the left. Our middle school teacher of the year is someone whose heart is in serving the community she loves and the kids who need her. Students naturally connect with her because she cares and shows them respect. I'm pleased to announce Ms. Deanne Myers as our middle school teacher of the year. I'll put this right here. And have the podium. It's two minutes, I promise. <laughs> A few things I've learned over the years. When we teachers sense that our students aren't as engaged or learning the content as quickly as we'd like, we feel a bit frustrated. What kids are learning, however, is how to read our reaction to that frustration. Are we teaching patience, kindness, and a love for learning new things? Or is our reaction harsh and ridiculing? I've learned that real growth happens with a welcoming and safe environment. Those teachers who nudged me to do better, smiled and spoke words of encouragement were my heroes, whether they knew it or not. I remember. My classmates and I were always appreciative of the teachers who kept their word, followed through, and made us a priority. They were committed. We came to understand that what we thought was mean was structure and that structure ensured boundaries and boundaries meant safety. We also thrived with teachers who had a sense of humor and could easily laugh. I remembered them. I've learned that all kids want to succeed. Perhaps they come from an environment where this is fostered, but what if they come from a place where success is not valued? We can offer those tidbits of success in the classroom and from those we hope to spark or maybe even ignite a love of learning. If not from home, then it must be at school. The best teachers instilled us in us a love of God, family, country, duty, and good manners. Yes, I knew I grew up a long time ago, but it is just as important today as it was then. 
I remember. It was those teachers who inspired me to choose this profession. I will end on this note. We all grew up reading fairy tales and one of my favorites was Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Little did I know then how much teachers have in common with Snow White. Just as she spent her days with seven wonderful little people, we do the same, albeit on a larger scale. We make a commitment to work and inspire the future docs. We have a few grumpies, always a sleepy, a sweet bashful or two, and hopefully many happies. And when the season's cool, we keep lots of tissue for our sneezies. I am grateful for the different personalities as no two days are alike. Thank you, John Rubis, for the nomination and to the committee that chose each of us. Thank you to all the people I have worked with over the last 32 years in sharing this journey with me. For that, I am grateful. Thank you. Uh, towards the back, like behind Walco. Yeah, I'm just cutting. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I'm cutting you off here. There we go. Hold on. Okay. Oh, video. He's not here. Tonight. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Moving on to our high school teacher of the year. Our next teacher of the year is his lead for his department's professional learning community. He is challenging, engaging, and shows students how to be innovative and active learners. I'm proud to present Mr. Tariq Alsherway as the High School Teacher of the Year Award. Let's give him a round of applause. Unfortunately, he cannot be here with us tonight, but he did record a short video, um, and so uh, we'll play that now. Thank you very much for this award. Uh, it's a great honor and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I wanna especially thank my family for getting me here and for all the support they've given me over the years. I've worked with a lot of amazing people and uh, I'd like to thank them as well. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank my students because if it weren't for them, I don't think I'd be here and 
all the great memories that they give me and all the reasons they give me to keep working here. Uh, thank you very much. All right. And lastly, we have our administrator of the year. This individual began their career on the Redwood campus and has been there for 16 years. They're an educator dedicated to fostering a positive and inclusive learning environment. And we'll let our slide catch up. I'm pleased here to present. Our Administrator of the Year, Ms. Alexa Barbara Tepper with this award, please come on up. Congratulations, and just a quick thank you. Um, this was a very pleasant surprise. Um, I wouldn't be here with a lot of the people here in this room. You've been my coaches and mentors and colleagues, so just this means a lot. Thank you so much. So as, as our board returns and, and uh, our board president will take us into the next part of the agenda, a short recess, I do want to congratulate all of our teachers of the year. Thank you for your support staff, for those amazing words. And I think, um, you know, every day in education is a blessing. You don't know what difference you're going to make just by simply smiling at someone or saying, I'm glad you're here today. Um, and just, you know, the difference. Um, and, and, you know, the thing about education is we may never know. Uh, the difference we make, but it's something that we know every educator does. So congratulations to all of you and the impact you've had, not only on the students that you work with, but the collective staffs that you've worked with and the influence you've had on them and on all of us. And so congratulations to our 2024 Employees of the Year. Definitely. Congratulations. I can't express any more than that and how well deserved it is. We will take a short recess. Um, we'll come back at what 625, which is seven minutes. The rest of you can stay out there and have cookies board. You just have to come back in seven minutes. All right. Short recess. We will now convene regular session. I'd like to move to focus on student learning. 7.1 by Cell Unified School District students matriculation to College of Sequoias. Um, and I'd like to welcome Superintendent President of College of Sequoias, Dr. Brent Calvin. Thank you, President Gaby. So let's just let's just identify the elephant in the room. That's just not fair. You got to a lot to follow all up. that, and now I'm standing between more student awards. I need to know when the auditors come in, the real dry auditors. Let me follow them for once. Uh, good evening, everybody. Brent Calvin, uh, Superintendent and President of the Cal College of the Sequoias. 
uh, uh, once again, an honor and a thrill for me to be here. Thank you for carving out a little bit of time. I know you're busy, so I'm going to run right through these pretty quickly. You've known our board for some time. Uh, John, Greg, Lori, Ken, you'll see all of them next week. But tonight we have our new board president, Raymond Macarena, with us. Please welcome Raymond. Doing a fabulous job, and we do look forward to our joint uh, board meeting with uh, yourselves and the city of Icelia. I think it's next week. So looking forward to hosting that on, on our campus. I've got a few slides, just updates, really, uh, on the College of the Scoys, and then I'll get right into the data regarding our, um, our, our joint students. Uh, first of all, uh, the University Center project is moving right along. We're in the design phase right now. It's going to be fabulous, and I'll give you an update next week on, on that, but uh, really, really a fun project for us, uh, supporting our partnership with Fresno State and hopefully other universities. Uh, we'll start demolition next spring at about this time, and then two years later, we'll have a university center to call home. So really excited about that, but that's not the only project we've been working on. We've also got the Student Union the companion project to the University Center. We'll talk about that next week as well. Uh, you see the timeline there, looking to move in the fall of 2027. So again, second largest, second largest um, county in the state out of 58 without a publicly funded four-year university. We're gonna change all of that in the fall of 2027. And um, we have the voters of this region to thank for that. So looking forward to, to that day opening opening that great uh, project. Uh, here is the project we already opened, the Educational Support Services Building right at the corner of Meadow and Mooney. We'll get a look at that next, next week as well. Really been great to consolidate all of our tutorial centers, our math labs and our writing centers under one roof for our, for our students in Visalia. I know you're gonna be impressed to see that. Uh, right across the street, we've got our food pantry, probably the nicest food pantry in the state of California. We call it the giant marketplace. We'll get a peek at that next week as well. And then uh, finally, uh, this probably had the, got the most attention. Uh, we opened up an on-campus football stadium um, and it was just uh, a lot of fun this, this uh, inaugural year. Uh, really an opportunity for us to get three or 4,000 people from the community on our campus five or six Saturdays um, every, every single fall. It's, it's fun to support our student athletes, but, but even funner to bring that many community members on our campus because they come for a football game, they leave knowing a lot more about their local community college. And then finally, in the uh, fall, we'll open up the Applied Tech and Trades Complex um, uh, in, on our Tulare campus, a $40 million uh, project that'll consolidate about 11 or 12 of our CTE programs. You've, many of you have seen our welding facility that's as big as an indoor football stadium in Tulare. Uh, this will just complement that, um, just about triple the overall size of, of kind of that complex. Really excited about that, and hopefully we'll get uh, this board down to see it. We've already had some of your high schools visit as well, so looking forward to showing that off in the fall. All righty then, I've got uh, our, our normal data sets and I'll just um, not try to read off the screen. I'm gonna try to read them from right here, but you can see that in the fall of 2023, the grand total of, of uh, Visalia Unified uh, School District students um, who have matriculated to, to COS was just under 3,300. Uh, that ma that's making a run at the all time high, which we established back in the fall of 2019. And so we're almost back to that pre pandemic high uh, that includes 461 dual enrollment students, which is by one, an all time record, uh, eclipsing by one the fall of 2022 numbers. Skipping ahead then to the percentage of, of uh, first time students uh, that are enrolled full time. We think that's a nice benchmark. Uh, students are shown to be that much more successful when they can attend full time, which is why we have uh, so much financial aid and on-campus jobs and co-curricular um, opportunities for our students because we we want them to to really engage and, and be full-time. So about three quarters of, of your students were uh, enrolled full-time uh, during their first semester. And the, the, the different majors runs the gamut from uh, university studies in math and science to uh, the um, AS degree for, for business administration, obviously registered nursing is always on that list, as well as administration of justice, but a, a, a nice number of uh, majors are popular with Bicellia Unified students. 
moving then to the um, number of students, the percentage of students that place directly into uh, transfer level English without support. That number dipped a little bit to 76%. Um, it's easy just to kind of put an asterisk next to it and say, well, these are these are some of the 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 the, the COVID the COVID kids or something like that. We're going to dig in a little deeper and maybe maybe see if it doesn't bounce back next year. But we did take a dip with that. But never fear, the 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 remaining 24% um, are still receiving transfer level English. They just um, are required to take a one unit support class um, that coincides with with uh, their primarily their primary English uh, class. Uh, in terms of student success. Um, there was an overall 72% course success, which is uh, pretty consistent with years past. Again, we're climbing back out of a, a pandemic hole. I think our all-time high for uh, success was, again, in that fall of 2019 cohort, 75%. So back at 72%. And then we disaggregate it by uh, gender and ethnicity as well. A couple of achievement gaps there that we'll, we'll, we'll want to see if become becomes a trend and look at that a little bit deeper. And, but that's why we do these studies, just to kind of dig a little deeper and find out if there's something really going on or if it's just an aberration. And then my final slide tonight uh, just shows the number of uh, graduates and uh, awards in the last year. And uh, uh, again, we're climbing. This is definitely attributed to to, to COVID. We had uh, we didn't have as much enrollment back in the fall of um, 20 and the fall of 21. So two years later, you're going to have less graduates. So. Uh, last spring, we had 528 graduates, still not bad for a total awards of 662. And again, uh, you can see down at the bottom of the page, most of those were in transfer studies um, for elementary school teachers and liberal arts um, with an emphasis in social science, again, uh, looking to be teachers. So uh, a, a, a nice a nice range of, of majors that um, uh, students are graduating with. With that, I know that was fast, but we're trying to play catch up here. So um, I'll thank you and, and answer any questions you might have of me. Go ahead, any questions from the board? Thank you, always great to see you. Keep up the good work, okay? We'll see you next week. Thank you, and I was gonna say, see you next you week. Much. Thank yep. you. Um, next 7.2 spotlight on good things happening in the district. All right, well, thank you. Uh, we appreciate our partnership with College of Sequoia. Um, it's amazing to have such a strong uh, academic program here in our own community that's continuing to grow and thrive for our students who uh, are, are looking to go, whether they wanna go to a four-year or looking to get a trade uh, or uh, get some classes and then, and then transfer. So we appreciate the partnership for uh, many of our programs with uh, College of Sequoia and look forward to our joint uh, city College Sequoia board meeting next week. So another, I mean, this is just a night of great things from our teachers to uh, hearing about our students moving on to uh, post-secondary. And so now we're going to spotlight some of the amazing things happening in Visalia Unified. And we're pleased to have a lot of people uh, here tonight in our audience who uh, will be recognized uh, as we go through the spotlight. So want to begin with a special recognition. I want to introduce uh, a coach that we have, Brian McDonald from Redwood High School. Let me get on the ball here with my PowerPoint. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gridiron to say a few words about uh, Mr. McDonald and just the impact he had on saving lives. And so, uh, Brandon. Well, thank you, Mr. Shrum, and thank you, Boar, for allowing us to do this. And just recognize uh, Mr. McDonald for his you know, heroic, heroic efforts um, on January 8th. So on January 8th during lunch, a student was enjoying her lunch with her friends near the locker room when she suddenly began choking on her food. Um, despite her efforts, she couldn't clear her throat and her friends quickly sought Mr. McDonald for his assistance who was nearby and he swiftly came to the student's aid, performing the Heimlich maneuver with effectively removing the obstruction from her throat, enabling her to breathe normally again. Um, and so he, you know, his quick thinking and action in the emergency resulted in potentially life-threatening situation from getting worse. And so Mr. McDonald reflects great credit to himself and um, he keeps up with the tradition of excellence at Redwood High School and Vice Unified School District. So we want to thank him for his efforts. Thank you, Mr. McDonald.
Thank you very much for that. And, and another one of the reasons why, you know, being trained in CPR and some of those things that many of our staff members uh, have is so important. You never know when you might be called on uh, to act in an emergency and to be ready. And so thank you for uh, representing the best that we have in Visalia Unified. Thank you. As we move on, we want to talk a little bit about some of our academic programs at Crowley Elementary. We see some images here from their STEM night. Uh, we, uh, over 100, fa 100 families participated in interactive science stations. We have one more STEM night planned at eight elementaries. This has been a great partnership uh, with our teaching and learning division, our school sites, PTAs, and others that have all come, and students uh, at schools that have all come together to put on these amazing STEM nights. They have been attended uh, very well uh, by our families and our community and just very excited about uh, bringing science into our communities and our schools. Another spotlight want to highlight Linwood Elementary School's Odyssey of the Mind team. Now, they're no stranger to the spotlight uh, for this. Um, they took their first, uh, they took first in division at the state competition in Los Angeles on March 16th. They competed against multiple districts from Fresno all the way to San Diego, many middle schools in that. They're heading to the world finals in Iowa on the third week in May. Uh, we have some students here from the team tonight. We'd like to stand and be recognized. So if you're from the Odyssey of the Mind team, Please stand. Congratulations and thank you for putting your mind to good use and, and seeing how that can learn and grow. And want to make a, you know, board, I also want to shout out in this moment that your commitment and funding in our budget this year, we allocated to each school site from ADA basically $10 per student for each principal to have funds to support extracurricular academic enrichment type programs. And so um, that has been put to good use in many places where uh, maybe some funding wasn't available. And so uh, we look forward to figuring out how do we continue some of that uh, in our budget cycles. We look to the upcoming year. Also, uh, you know, conserving energy is very important for a lot of different reasons, uh, financially as well as for our environment. And so we had over 30 of the USD schools presented with Energy Star Awards from Synergistic. Buildings at these schools rated in the top 25 nationwide for energy efficiency. All VUSD elementaries, along with Green Acres Middle School, received this award, and we aim to continue to move towards more energy conservation. Congratulations to those schools. Another great event we held a few weeks ago, and many of us had, and our board had the opportunity to attend. We did host Special Olympics a few weeks ago at Golden West High School. Thank you, Golden West, for uh, supporting that event again. Around 200 students from Visola Unified, Tulare County Office of Education, and our adult day programs participated in this event. We have such talented individuals. All participants were awarded medals after the event. Want to thank our community for participating and our staff and volunteers who helped put it together. It truly is an inspirational event uh, if you've ever had a chance to attend or volunteer. And uh, so congratulations to all those that supported and participated in that event. Moving on to our doc band. Now, this was a tradition that uh, took a pause be during our COVID years, but, but reemerged last year. And, and last month, students interested in entering the healthcare field were selected to participate in a careers roundtable known as Doc Band. Approximately 85 juniors from Visalia had the opportunity to meet and they were at roundtables with local physicians, nurses, and other healthcare professionals to learn about the profession. Now, during the day, they had a chance to interact with some of those professionals at COWEA and go through some different simulations about what it looks like to be in the healthcare field, uh, and then got to visit and talk to individuals who were in the field. And part of the hope of this is that our students see a potential career in a medical pathway, uh, all the way up to doctor, physician, surgeon, and then come back to live in this community uh, and work in, in many of our healthcare industries that we have here. So special thank you to our sponsors, Kawea Delta Healthcare and Central Valley Christian for partnering on that uh, event. Also, as most of you know, you probably couldn't escape this, yesterday was Eclipse Viewing, and so we had multiple schools throughout our district held events. We see some images here from Oak Grove, Charter Home Academy, and Global Learning. Schools provided glasses, instructed students on appropriate use. Um, it was an incredible opportunity, although our percentage here was not the full total Eclipse, it was still, you could definitely see the movement, and so what a great day to bring science into our classrooms and then see it happening uh, in real life right before our students. 
And speaking of our students, uh, our students are no strangers to the Character Matters Recognition Awards that we have uh, here in our district and through the county. And so we're pleased to have a student with us tonight, moving to student success, always excited to be notified of these recognitions. And so I'd like to introduce Josiah Diaz, a fifth grader from Pinkham Elementary, selected for the Tulare County Office of Education's Your Character Matters Award. Josiah, if you want to stand and be recognized, I think, do we have Josiah here? Yes, I thought that was you. Yep. And I see you have some family and, and support around you. So thank you all for being here. Now, he has mastered being kind and says he learned it from his parents, so uh, to his family influence. So congratulations to you and thank you to your parents for raising such a kind student. We appreciate you being here tonight and congratulations on your recognition. And that, uh, I believe you can go back and watch the video. These are on, I think, the Tulare County website and then housed, um, is it KSEE? -E? I'm going to get the right, yes. which they, KS, K, KC, uh, as well. So congratulations to you. Moving on to continuing, again, some of our amazing students that we have. Um, our FFA chapters here are some of the best amongst the state uh, and the nation, I would say. And so we have several recognitions tonight amongst our FFA. I'd like to begin with LD, El Diamante FFA Water Issues Team competed Saturday at the California State Finals. This team was recognized as the state champion team. We have individual coaches included Kyler Hunter, who was first uh, high individual in the state, and Ashton Reed, who was third high individual as, uh, in the state. This team is here tonight, and so if you are, please stand and be recognized for your work. And I think we may have had, did I have our images backward there? That might be, we've got a couple. We've got lots of FFA tonight that we're really proud about, but congratulations to you. Continue with FFA, Visalia Technical Early College was selected to represent the California FFA Association as the National Chapter Award recipient. The National Chapter Award program recognizes FFA chapters that effectively implement the mission and strategies. VTech was recognized for this award out of 79 agricultural programs in the region. Please stand and be recognized if you're here tonight and your, and your team members. I'm so proud of these students for making such an incredible impact through these programs. And I believe they're also gonna be making a public comment later on. Now, what was so exciting about this is I happened to be up there um, and one of our images we have captured here, uh, one of our students who uh, graduated last year uh, was served as a statewide officer, also from El Diamante. And so uh, he was, I was actually at the state convention uh, to see him give his speech. Uh, but then also uh, we knew VTech had been nominated, but it was obviously a surprise, you know, and a great recognition to receive the actual award. So that was a great uh, opportunity to be up there as well. And so proud of our programs. Uh, and our coaches that not only support FFA, but all of these other programs take time. Uh, and these individuals pour their heart and soul into these programs, just like our coaches and others do. And so thank you so much for making these opportunities happen for our kids. We appreciate you. All right. Show a couple images there. I think we got all that. Moving on to student success continued mass Super Bowl. Super, yeah, Super Bowl. Students from La Jolla Middle School showcased their mathematical prowess at the Tulare County Math Super Bowl. They competed against over 700 students from across the county. Their seventh grade team clinched first in the team bowl competition. Individual accolades included in eighth grade Tasman fulfilled, or eighth, excuse me, eighth grade category, Tasman fulfilled fourth place, seventh grade category, Nathan Sacho fourth place, and in seventh grade category, uh, Mason Yates first place, outperforming all other competitors in the county during the Powder Bowl. So congratulations to those participants. If any of you are here, please stand uh, and be recognized. And not only proud of our academic success, but also athletic success, two Visalia High School boys basketball players earned the 2024 East Yosemite Leeds Top Honor. Redwoods, Cole Gilchrist, and El Diamante Santana Guerrero shared the Most Valuable Player Award. In addition, six Tulare County players were named to the all EYL first team, including Izzy Briggs from Mount Whitney, Joseph Alekas from El Diamante, Xander Jensen from Redwood, 
and Jagger Brooks from Golden West. Congratulations, these incredible players. And if any of you are here, please stand so that we can recognize you. Continuing with some student success, and many of you are aware of California Scholarship Foundation academic uh, achievement that they give. And so we had a few students who have been recognized in some different categories and wanted to recognize them tonight. We have a few students who were selected by uh, the California Scholarship Federation, CSF. It's an academic organization with high standards for participation. The following students were recognized as Seymour Award Central fi Region finalists from Redwood. We have Claire Hanenchi, or we have Claire Gonzalez and Donna Hanenchi, and from El Diamante, Pedro Campos Reyes from Ridgeview Middle School, Adele Gonzalez, who won the D. Giovanni Award Essay Contest. And Adele wins this award after competing with other students from the entire central region. So uh, congratulations to those students. If any of you are here, if you please stand and be recognized as well. Continuing with our visual and performing arts, uh, Golden West High School Choirs performed admirably in the California Music Educators Association Central Section Festivals in Visalia. The Chamber Singers and the Trailblazer Concert Choir both received unanimous superiors. The Treble Choir, under the direction of student teacher Casey Bauer, rated excellent overall performance with a superior rating in sight singing. Congratulations to them. Moving on to track and field, VUSD hosted our track, elementary, and field uh, events. Uh, we did get rained out last week, but hopefully this Friday, uh, fingers crossed, we can get it in. It is the ch championship. Everybody send good weather um, there. Uh, and so, again, thank you to our coaches, our parents that have been flexible. Um, you know, they, we, we hope to get it in the last week, but it just didn't happen. Uh, so moving on to that, they, these have been well attended by our community. Students look forward to them every year. Championships will be April 12th at 5 o'clock, hosted at both Mineral King and Visalia Community Stadium. We do have a makeup schedule for April 19th, but again, hoping for good weather. So again, thank you to our students, our teachers, our staff that worked so hard to bring that event together. I want to recognize a few of our uh, coaches and, and staff that, again, commit so much time, energy, and effort into guiding our youth. We have a few coach recognitions this month. Coach Hadish from Redwood reached career win number 200 on the baseball field on March 13th. Coach Watts, also from Redwood, was selected as one of 13 recipients for this year's Lifetime Service Award by the California Wrestling Hall of Fame on June, will be in June 1st in Fresno. And Nick Yaki from Mount Whitney will be recognized by the National Federation of State High School Associations as the 2022-23 CIF Central Section Basketball Coach of the Year in August. If those individuals are here, if you'd please stand so that we can recognize you. Appreciate your, your leadership and dedication and uh, success as well. So student teacher advisories, it's always important to get voice from our students and teachers. And so recently hosted these advisories uh, where our students and staff worked on questions, provided feedback around our strategic plan and initiatives uh, so that we're developing this plan collaboratively. So I wanna thank all of those individuals for that. We know how important leadership is in supporting coaches and supporting teachers and supporting all those great things that happen at our school sites. So we're continuing to invest in the leadership of our district team and our school site leaders through a partnership where we're working to elevate leadership. Uh, in January, we had several teachers and principals from multiple schools, if you remember, joined us uh, in Virginia for their leadership program. This cohort will continue. We'll be starting a new cohort uh, this summer. Uh, and so we'll have um, upwards of 20 plus uh, district and principals going through this enhanced leadership program, which is going to contribute greatly to supporting our school sites and student achievement. Lots of observances in February and March, very important ones. We have Women's History Month, School Social Worker Week, and then moving into April, we recognize National Assistant Principals Week, National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And we've recognized many of these and other things in social media, uh, including recruitment of talented professionals from our area, facilities update to our community, a highlighted Special Olympics, and then uh, you'll hear a report in just a little while about summer school enrollment opening up. Uh, Ridgeview hosted our High Five Friday in March. And uh, apparently the middle school 
brought some energy for 7.30 in the morning for middle school kids I'm seeing here. And then uh, also very important this month was recognition of Cesar Chavez Day. So lots of activities across our schools uh, for that. And so those are some of our observances uh, that we had in our social media. So thank you, Board President Gaby and board members. Thank you to all of the individual staff and students that were here today so that we could recognize you. We're proud of you and we appreciate what you do for Viso Unified. And that concludes my report. Thank you. This is not an action item, it's information only. And 7.3, 2024 Extended Year and Summer Program Report. Assistant Superintendents Mark Thompson and Andy DeMeo. Just so you know, it won't hurt my feelings if you do decide to step away. I will give a moment if you want to step <laughs> on out at this time, but you're welcome to stay. All right. Good, good evening, Board President Gaby, Board members, Superintendent Trump. Here tonight to just uh, me and Mr. DeMeo to talk about extended year and summer school preparing as we're gearing up for that and getting ready to go and excited about the opportunities that we're going to provide our students this year. So I just wanted to jump into this as we have core beliefs and commitments really want to just anchor in on all students can achieve at high levels and demonstrate continuous growth while summer school is both. Um, gaining credits may be missed in the past. It's also an opportunity for acceleration and also for enrichment uh, for many of our students. So just great opportunity to continue learning throughout the whole school year and not taking that six weeks off, but staying focused and staying motivated. Again, as a role of the district, our focus is to create conditions for our schools to be successful, school leaders to be successful, so our teachers can be successful, successful so our student outcomes, students are successful and have increased student outcomes. High school and summer school this year. Just wanted to give some basic information on that. June 4th is when it starts. We do start uh, in the school year this year, the very end of May. So enjoy that. We will be starting summer school um, almost immediately after that, June 4th through July 11th. We have two sessions going on. So kind of like semester one and semester two uh, going on there. The dates are there. This is a four day a week program from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30. Holidays, we do have a couple of holidays, which basically just adjust the four day week um, there. Pro Youth is available starting at 1230 or immediately after school. So there's opportunities there. Breakfast and lunch is provided and transportation is also provided. High school summer school, we have two goals for high school summer school. Uh, one is credit recovery. And so all credit recovery, meaning that is a student took the class and maybe was unsuccessful uh, in that class, they have the opportunity to retake that class to earn those credits. So that's what credit uh, recovery credit is. In-person learning will be happening for all recovery credit classes. And that will be for all school sites. Hence the circle with all of our schools there is that all schools are invited to the summer school and are able to participate. Our second goal is, um, is for acceleration credit. Meaning students have not taken that class yet, but now they are taking it so that they can pass that class in summer to have more options during the school year. This is a blended in-person and online learning opportunity here. Uh, we have made some adjustments. Uh, we will be still using the Edgenuity program for our social sciences, but there will be some shifts as students will be coming in one day a week to check in with teachers and also all finals uh, and assessments will be taking in person because we want to ensure that our students have that academic growth and learning uh, during that time. So that way, it's not just about that class, but it's about the next class that they take. That we want to make sure that they're prepared for each of their classes and that summer actually enriches and, and provides learning not just credits. So that's a, that's definitely an adjustment for this year. And ninth grade, students that are taking health is all in person. We're projecting an enrollment of a little over 4,000 students per, per, uh, per semester and uh, per, uh, projecting about 105 staff members to staff that. With that, uh, this slide just shares the recovery credit. If you see on the left-hand side, those are the classes that we'll be offering again for students that need to recover those credits. And on the right-hand side is the acceleration, meaning that students are looking for a class to get ahead. One thing that's new this year I wanted to share with is we have eighth graders that are coming in. Traditionally, we had had eighth graders stay at the, the middle school site. Um, as you can imagine, um, maybe I wasn't the most successful in middle school and we say after eighth grade, hey, why don't you stay at the middle school for another six weeks? That sounds very exciting for everyone, doesn't it? Um, rather than that, we're actually going to bring them to the high school this year. 
and we're going to prepare them for high school. We're going to get them motivated, get them pumped, and then we're going to really target in on some ELA and math supports to ensure that they are ready for day one of, of high school. So a shift rather than it, hey, you did this because maybe we didn't quite figure it out in middle school. Rather than doing that and holding it that way, we're going to go the other direction, really target in. Hey, we're preparing you for high school. This is what we're doing. Come in. Let's get ready. Let's get going. So you're prepped and ready to go for that day, first day of school. With that, they will actually get some elective credit to do that. So they also are already working towards moving forward in their high school career. As everyone knows, it feels a lot much better to feel like you're a touch ahead than it feels like you're always caught trying to catch up has a different feeling to it. So we're really excited about this and the work that we're doing here. In middle school, it will be at Ridgeview Middle School this year, program for seventh graders. Again, kind of that same theme that we have going on. So seventh graders are actually sixth graders coming into seventh grade. Um, we're really going to be focusing on CTE hands-on learning with embedded ELA and math. Um, so what does that mean? More hands-on. What we realize is as we do hands-on learning and we get students to read, write, do math, we can learn, grow, and build, and, let's, and, and it's about confidence, right? Building the student's confidence in those skills so that way they're ready to go for the first day of school. Also this year, we've included PE uh, during that time to give them some option or opportunity to have uh, movement and to have that opportunity as well in summer school. For our eighth graders, these are students that maybe need a little additional support in ELA or math, so, um, but also they will get PE. So for an example, if a student needs extra support in ELA only, their, their schedule to have a three period would be ELA, PE, and art. If they need extra support in both ELA and math, they'll have both ELA, math, and then PE. They would not have that art opportunity. So all students that are out there right now, I know everyone loves to come to summer school and that's highly engaging and that's what we will look for our summer. And for those that need it, we're there with you. And I, but what I do ask you is this, it is still April. So if you're there and you're like, hey, uh, you're on that borderline, I challenge you to really engage in your studies, keep focusing on what you're doing and show what you can do. If you don't quite get there, we'd love to have you at summer school and we'll be working with you. But I will tell you, it will be learning, but it'll also have some fun and engagement as well as uh, that's the best learning is when you're having some fun while you're doing it. Finally, staff there, we have principal certificate is 14 staff members, classified six. Our capacity here is looking at 350 for each three week session. So students would just go to one session, not to both. Also in middle school, we will have the pro youth afterwards. Lunch and is provided, breakfast is provided, and transportation is, is provided as well. So where did we come up with that for middle school? We just wanted to share with you is we did uh, some surveying last year and wanted to make sure that we are uh, hitting our targets as we want to keep improving as we always are committed to continuous improvement. So some considerations we looked into is that we got feedback on is providing engaging courses and enrichment, targeting incoming seventh graders to connect them to middle school programs and then remediation opportunities. And so our action steps was this was that we included art and PE this year, STEM enrichment. Um, we also, this is something I'm, I'm actually very proud of the team for doing. While summer school is great for all students, we do have some students that maybe need some additional supports. And this year we're really targeting in on students that are English learners, what we call LTELs, long-term English learners, that could benefit from some different additional class time and, and more really academic language. So we're really targeting in and actually doing special invites for them and also with some of our students that are on IEPs that could benefit from that work as well. So while all students are welcomed, we will be handing out special invites there. And obviously the opportunity for remediation is important as that's part of our summer school programming. Now I'm gonna hand over to uh, Mr. DeMeo and he's gonna share about our elementary summer school for this year. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you board for having me here this evening. As Mark said, I wanted to just share some few details with you so you have an idea what's gonna take place this summer. So in our elementary group, similar to last year, what we're doing is we're hosting summer school sites at 10 different school sites. What that means is we're partnering our schools up so that we're able to send the students to one particular school. Rest assured, transportation is going to be provided. So any of our families that would like to participate are going to be able to do so. You're also going to notice, although it's kind of hard to see how it's lined up, who the leaders of those schools are going to be. This year, we worked really hard with our leadership development department to really help support our assistant principals and our 
individuals who are going into administration, if you will, this was our opportunity to spend this year getting ready for what that administrative program is going to look like. And our culminating activity is to give these individuals opportunities to lead a school over the summer school system. So we're really excited about that. We've got some great leaders who are going to be guiding that work. This year, the program is going to be broken into two different pieces. There's going to be a morning piece and an afternoon piece, and families can choose which ones are going to be best for them. We hope they stay the whole day because it's going to be awesome. In the morning, you're going to see different activities taking place for math, reading, and then our outdoor PE activities. Our teachers are going to be content specialists, so they're going to have a chance to kind of teach their subject, and our students are going to have a chance to kind of rotate through, because we want the day to look a little bit different than they're used to during the regular school day. In the afternoon, which is really exciting, we have some different things that are going to be taking place this year. So some of the things the students are going to be taking advantage of in the afternoon is units on culinary opportunities. We have chefs coming in from the local community who are going to be teaching the students what cooking is like. They're going to have hands-on demonstrations. They're gonna have all kinds of opportunities to kind of dig in and see what healthy eating looks like. They're also going to have a chance to explore things like robotics, esports, um, gaming, lots of different things. We've partnered with different entities in our community to kind of bring that work into our schools while also having our community take part in the educational experience. So we're really excited about seeing what that's gonna look like. And I also wanted to just point out that last year we took an opportunity to talk to the staff, the students, the parents and the community to find out what worked well? What are some things that you'd like to see different? And some of those examples were, gosh, this is a great program, but we'd like it to be a little bit longer. So this year, we're going to be hosting a four-week program, basically the month of June, and then the month of July, if families are still looking for those opportunities for students. We have partnered with our pro-youth partners, one of our great partners we work with, to provide that support over the summer as well. So again, Lots of chances for us to really engage the students. And as you know, the state has asked us to see about extending both our school day and our school year. This is our opportunity to do just that. And finally, and very importantly, is our special education program. Now, in most cases, like what Mark was talking about and in our elementary pieces, our students who receive special ed supports will absolutely be able to have those opportunities during the school days. But we also know that some of our students need a more specific specialized program because we want to make sure their learning continues with the things they've been working on in the school day over the summer. So for some of those students, we offer a specialized program at several of our school districts to really make sure their needs are taken care of over the summer. And this just kind of shows what some of those details are like. And with that said, oh, and we also have a flyer here. Um, registration for summer school for elementary opened up on April 1st, and that was shared out with them. And, and please know, board, that if our families want to go, we're going to make sure we have room for them. So we have lots of space, lots of opportunities to grow should we need to. And with that said, Mr. Thompson and I are here to answer any questions you might have. Any board comments? Thank you for your report and um, does sound very fun. And I'm going to have to check out the culinary there and uh, see all the Please cool stuff do. they're doing there. But no, very cool enrichment um, opportunities. Thank you. Um, Visel Unified School District 2023 school year quarter three report. Superintendent Shrum. I agree on the culinary piece. Going to be an exciting summer uh, of both learning and enrichment for all of our students. So uh, thank you to our team for putting that together. Um, our quarter report, as the board knows, we're committed to bringing you our updated data and those other pieces um, in, in a timely manner. And so to stay consistent with how we're doing on meeting our core beliefs and commitments. And so we're pleased tonight to present our third quarter report. And we'll start with Nathan Hernandez and business services. Thank you, Superintendent Shrum. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Um, so as we know, our business services team, our focus is on ensuring our sites, our students, our staff have the resources that they need to be successful. Uh, and so when we look at the, the things that we're measuring around our budget and those other areas, that's what we're thinking about. Um, our first item is our, our budget to actuals. And so we are on track with, um, with our spending and aligned to our budget. One thing I did want to highlight was um, 
uh, and we talked about this in our in our second interim reporting is our budget for our revenues is less than our budget for our expenditures and the reason for that is the spending down of our one time funds and so we do for the current year still have a balanced budget and we'll be working on balancing our budget for next year as we go through our, our budget development process. Um, on the attendance side for the third quarter, we have seen an increase in our attendance again over last year. And last year's increase was an, an increase over the prior year. So we are um, coming back from some of those lows of the pandemic when we were in the 89 to 90% range. And we're getting closer to where we were prior to that around 94%. Um, our purchasing print shop tech services team for continuing to track their metrics. One thing that we added was around our Chromebooks and um, the amount of Chromebooks that we're actually um, touching and repairing is uh, about 5,000 over the last quarter. And that is why one of our continuous improvement steps is to kind of advance that refreshment process. Um, you know, when we look at our inventory, we purchased a lot of Chromebooks in 2020. I don't know what was going on. Um, but for, for some reason, uh, we have a lot of Chromebooks all purchased at the same time. And so we're doing a refreshment cycle to try and replace some of those Chromebooks because we're noticing that as, um, as uh, over the last, now they're four years old, um, they're needing battery replacements and those kind of things. So, and then continuing to do um, the work that we're doing with the um, human resources development team and focusing on improving and enhancing our, our, our Tyler systems, our financial system and our um, programs for staff. And with that, I will hand it over to Mr. DeMeo. Thank you, sir, because Lord knows I'll never say no to a microphone. Um, okay, thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to share a little bit about the great things that are going on in educational services. Um, to start with, I wanted to talk just a little bit about our Expanded Learning Opportunities Program. Recall the last time we were here, I shared with you that we wanted to take a look at students that are participating by our student group, because we know that while all students benefit from this program, some of our students perhaps might need opportunities on a greater scale than others. So this gives us a chance to kind of see those student groups that are taking advantage of it the most, and perhaps the ones that we need to spend a little bit more time with. I also wanted to show you down at the bottom the program offerings and, again, the amount of students who have taken advantage of those. This helps us know the types of programs that are most interesting to our families. Next up, let's take a look at our family and community resources. One of the most important things we know that is an indicator of student success is student attendance. So while we are very pleased with the progress we're making, we know across the state and across the country, we still haven't quite recovered to our pre-pandemic levels of appropriate student attendance. Again, super pleased with where we are right now. We're at 14%. Last year, we were at 22%, and the year before that, it was in the 30s. So again, we're trending in the right direction in all of our groups with the exception of our SARB students and board, as you know, those are the students that we are working intensely with on school attendance. So we're gonna to continue to work on that area and find out what other things might we try to help them see a difference. And this just kind of shows you how we're making those connections with our community. Because again, we know our families are in great need. We wanna make sure that as a district, we're really supporting our families where we need. So this just is some statistics to show you the opportunities we have made to connect with our families, to make sure they're aware of those resources that are available for them. Next up is our equity and student services. Um, and thanks to Dr. Viegas, last time we met, when we were talking about suspensions, he wanted to see, gosh, does this represent the number of days we suspended or the number of students impacted? And really, we really wanna talk about which students are really being impacted, right? By name, by face. So this shows you the amount of students in our system cumulatively who have had a suspension for them. So again, this number is growing, but it's one to show us what's working with our system and perhaps what do we need to work on. A number I am excited about is that expulsion number because what it's showing is that this time last year, we were trending at almost double where we are right now. So again, indicating to us perhaps the great things that are taking place at our school site. So thanks be especially to our school site principals and teams for the great work they're doing. Then you see a couple indicators with our counselors. Again, really, really emphasizing the, the support we're offering our students and more specifically, the individual opportunities we're taking to connect with students to make sure that they're on track and they recognize what's happening and what's important for their pathway to success. 
Finally, we're gonna end with our special education numbers. What again, you're going to see is a comparison between quarter two and quarter three. And what you'll see it with that top number is those numbers look similar. And what that tells us is the identification numbers for special ed are staying about the same. And that's encouraging because you might recall last year we were trending up at about uh, 28 percentage points, meaning we were growing by an incredible rate. Based on the work that's taking place at our school sites and also the numbers of students that are exiting, we're finding that students are receiving the supports they need in their classrooms with the different opportunities we're adding to them. So again, that's really encouraging. And again, great things that are happening. We're just trying to continue some of those things. So we know as we wrap up this school year, we're wrapping up the year while we're also planning for the new year. So again, as our goal is making sure our students receive what they need to be successful, the work we're doing moving forward is to really, really clearly identify what's working, what needs to be adjusted, and perhaps what needs to be changed to make sure we're reaching all the students we need to in the future. And with that said, I'll off Mr. Dillon should be coming up. All right, thank you, sir. Good evening. So I'm going to uh, just kind of quickly point our attention to a few things. We won't go into all of these numbers. Um, the the data is pretty similar to the data we've uh, shared with you in the past in these first couple of slides. The one thing I will point out is just as a as a reminder about just the scope of what we do, um, recognizing that our our district employs around 3,800 employees. So we're talking about a massive system and a ton of different people. Um, and so one of the things I just wanna quickly draw our attention to, um, and that's not working, but that's okay. Um, if you look on the bottom the bottom row there, uh, Robin Narharkri and her team continue to lead one of the most robust district-ran teacher and administrative induction programs across the state. Um, and on May 15th, uh, we will be exiting 75 teachers and 12 administrators who will, we will, they will present their growth and their competency for us to be able to move forward and recommending them for their clear California credentials. So that's very exciting. Um, as well, a uh, couple other numbers I want to just point here. Uh, Kevin Mays and his team in our personnel support services team uh, continue to really do a lot of um, amazing work. They often are walking hand in hand with folks through various challenging times, not just in employment, but just over the scope of their life and um, encouraged by the work that continues to happen there. One of the things, um, in addition to obviously our, our um, staff injury, injury related leave data is if you look at the bottom, the classified sub fill rate is a kind of a bright spot that I would draw our attention to. Uh, we can continue, continue to stay very steady with our certificated sub fill rate, which has been above 96% since this past, uh, this time last year and even prior to that. But we've continually grown in our classified sub fill rate. So that's great, meaning that we're reducing, sometimes just reducing vacancies and reducing absences helps because you're not trying to fill as many. We've also been able to shore up and, and bring in and build that bank um, and pool of classified subs. So increasing uh, from 40s last year, starting the middle of the year, the high 30s to now. Uh, at 60% over this past quarter. The last, uh, excuse me, the next slide here um, is in a little bit of information from Dr. Serena Arias and her team in hiring and recruitment. Uh, so rather than kind of dive into numbers for this year, which honestly at this point are a little bit static, what I wanna do is point your attention to, this is recruitment for next year. So these are looking at recruitment for the 24-25 school year. So right now we know we have anticipated vacancies for certificated staff at 110. This is specific to uh, certificated non-management positions, 110 vacancies that we're anticipating based on resignations and uh, retirements. Obviously with our SRP program that we'll, uh, Mr. Hernandez will bring forward, we had a lot of folks um, uh, apply for that. And so right now, um, although 110 vacancies sounds like a lot, I'm very encouraged to tell you we've already made 89 offers for those 110 vacancies. And so we only have currently 21 positions remaining to fill and we already have multiple recruitment events coming up and I'll just share about that in just a minute. So that's exciting news. Um, in addition for our classified recruitment, we have 176 vacancies. That's what you see there where it says 93 practical. What that means is that the difference there is 83 positions that represents the contracted staff that we work with specifically for special ed positions that pro provide legally required IEP related services. And then 
I'll shift you. I was just kind of talking about this, but these are some of the events we have coming up. And so just as an example, I mentioned we have 21 to certificated vacancies that we know of. Obviously stuff happens over the summer and we prepare for that. Um, but to give you an idea, 21 vacancies for, for certificate positions that we're aware of. We have our VUSD teacher job fair coming up on April 19th, just next Friday. And we have 205 applicants. We're gonna be okay. Uh, so it's exciting news to share. Lots of efforts, lots of creativity going into how we recruit, recruiting differently, um, getting out into the community, um, really leaning and, and benefiting from our communications team who supported us with that and doing that kind of cross-divisional work. And then the, the last thing on this note I'll share is for our classified recruitment, um, just I, I want to thank uh, Serena and her team, just uh, thinking about, you know, our classified staff who work in, in different vocations and industries are not used to EdJoin and our educational system. And so we've been intentional. We've sort of removed that, you know, egocentric kind of ethnocentric aspect of maybe how we look at things from our lens. And we've shifted to say, okay, how do we meet people where they're at? How do we go out into the community, connect with people where they are, go to places that they're going to go when they're looking for jobs? And so we're heavily involved in doing so. Uh, we, we have a wonderful uh, partnership with our own Visalia Adult School, working with them to hire our, and recruit from our own Visalia Adult students. Uh, so it's a great way to just keep them in the system and benefit from that amazing program. Um, in addition, we have we work with the Workforce Investment Board involved in those programs. And then COS, you know, uh, Brent Calvin was just here a minute ago. COS will be hosting their first annual careers and education job fair coming up on April 18th. We'll be there. We'll be in the very first inaugural one. And we're excited to uh, connect with and recruit and hire their top talent coming out of their child development and education programs. So it's very exciting things. The last thing I want to point your attention to um, is some new data. So as many of you know, we've shared um, over the last two years with our team kind of coming into human resources development, we've recognized that there are a number of systems that we really need to bring up to date um, and, and, and maximize and, and make more efficient, more effective. And so since the start of this school year, uh, we've identified 23 processes that are being done, and we'll just say manually, right? They're, they're, they're paper forms, they're things that are being routed through, you know, uh, no longer triplicate, that's good, but still paper type, you know, manual tasks. Um, Dr. Judy Burgess has really kind of led the charge on expanding our systems and, and operational capacity, um, as well as Kevin May is kind of coming alongside with that, so I can credit them with the visuals you're seeing here. But of the 23 processes we've identified and we're working to automate, at this point now, we have 39% of those processes considered fully automated. Fully automated um, is essentially how we look at something when it's 75% or more done through the use of a technological system, whether that's a, a web-based system or digital system we use here um, at the district office. So excited about that and excited about the next steps that are there. Um, I'm, as uh, has been shared before, we obviously have ongoing continuous improvement steps. Um, one of the things that I want to share, and this is probably very of interest to our principals out here, but we have already begun working with PowerSchool, and we have already implemented the records platform, which is the base program that allows us, it's a foundational system for what is called the Perform system. Perform is an online platform that allows us to build out a framework for digital and online evaluations that would be done for all of our employees across our system. So that implementation has begun, and we are excited to be rolling that out over the course of this next year. At that this point, I'd like to invite Assistant Superintendent Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. We'll move into learning and leadership, jump right into it tonight. So my first data point I want to share with you is our leadership development. As you've graciously done, is really invested in our work with UVA and really targeting in on we know coaching matters, we know leadership matters, and the more that we develop leadership and target in, the, the better off each students are gonna be with the outcomes that we're gonna see from students because their leadership is strong and their teachers are gonna benefit from, from that as well. Um, it starts with our ASLs, is, which are administrators of school leadership. Um, every single week, every single day, they're at school sites. And so this right here is just showing how many coaching visits they've done over the last couple months. Um, and mind you, these are two hour visits each one. So this is this is quite an investment, 237. Our next one, this was just more to share with you. iReady, 
Um, I don't have data here tonight because we just recently took the last one and we have one more assessment that will be coming. I will bring it to you, but we do it three times a year. Um, so that I just wanted to show that, that that will be coming in the next one. Also, so our benchmark assessment system or BAS meets or exceeds. This is basically if you're a teacher or running record, listening to the students read, uh, do an error analysis and working through that. These are our students that are met at exceeds uh, 37, 45 and 49 percent. Again, for the most part, they're up a little bit. There is an anomaly there in kindergarten, um, which is something we'll be looking into and studying on that. We do believe it might be um, as we've implemented foundations and have introduced some different queuing systems and how they're doing things that that might have thrown off some of our students, our younger students. But there's some work there that we're going to look into and, and study. Um, paper, as you guys have invested in paper as a 24-7 online tutoring program that students can use from fourth grade on up to 12th grade. Um, for this quarter, we have uh, almost 5,800 engagements, over 2,500 writing reviews. And compared to last year at this time, we're at about a 60% increase of usage um, in the tutoring and at about a 47% increase in the writing. So we are definitely seeing an increase and still really putting that out there and getting that work. Actually, my quarter three um, video, if anyone actually sees it, uh, actually talks about uh, paper engagements there. So again, we're always looking to have continuous improvement steps. Um, I did not share on Math 1 tonight, but obviously we're very much focused on Math 1 and the work that we're doing there that is continuing with the six-week benchmark cycles. We just had one benchmark, didn't feel like that made a lot of sense to bring it to you tonight, uh, but I will be bringing grades and uh, scores uh, here in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, studying that BAS data, especially for kindergarten, to see what that why there was a little bit of adjustments there. Uh, foundations, with our focus on phonics, really targeting in on that and, and continuing fidelity. Uh, we've had a great start, but a great start doesn't mean anything if you don't sustain it and you don't maintain it and that you don't keep moving it forward. So really focusing there. Finally, um, leadership and coaching and training. Our uh, principals have been phenomenal. Our leaders have been phenomenal, ready to learn, ready to go. And we're really trying to really be very clear on what we're saying leading in Visalia means, what it looks like, what it sounds like, and what that, what that means. So that way we can continue to develop to that ideal model, not just interpretations. Um, last but not least, professional learning communities, PLC work. We continue with the embedded coaching, specifically at school sites. It's been very powerful there. And again, targeting uh, specific schools and going in and talking to students about paper to continue to build that capacity. So that's that at this time. I'll have Eric here, uh, CEO. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. So just a couple of updates tonight from operations, just to little shot there of our uh, new transportation admin building going in. I just wanted to share our operations commitment for student learning uh, conti to continually improve processes and systems and ensure equitable allocation of resources. So we'll jump right in. Um, so on facilities, we've got projects, as you know, we've got projects going on. They're, they're pretty much endless. Uh, we've got lots of projects going on this summer, but this last quarter, we did complete one project. There's eight in progress and there's nine in design. So really no end in sight on the projects continuing forward. Nutritional services had a little bit of a dip, uh, but that's just really due to the calendar and spring break. So they had, we had less days, so we served less meals. So they're continuing to provide the uh, no cost breakfast and lunch to students. Uh, as we go and and as was mentioned tonight uh, for extended year in summer school we will also be providing uh, breakfast and lunch to all of our summer school students um, transportation i'm going to have a little bit more to say about transportation at the end but uh, we've still got our 29 gen ed routes 14 routes we're hovering about that uh, around 85 percent on time we're still struggling a little bit with uh, having enough bus drivers um, we are still a little bit short but we're actively recruiting and uh, trying to hire as we go um, maintenance work orders, uh, we're continuing to knock down the number of work orders, become more efficient. We are also working on um, how we are managing our work orders at the site level for the summer. So we've got a new system that will be rolling out where the site custodians will be kind of the gatekeepers of the work orders at their site. So we'll be able to maybe add some efficiencies along there. And then custodial and grounds. Really just uh, continuing to work on, on uh, curb appeal and making sure our fields are ready to go for the spring. And really they're ramping up for graduation season. So that's the main thing for custodial and grounds. But as we go to the improvement 
uh, the improvement steps, I wanted to share a couple of things about TransFinder. So the implementation is, is continuing. The SPED routes are complete. The gen ed routes are completely routed. All the kids are loaded on their routes. So really we've moved to the next phase of implementation, which really is increasing the outreach to families so that we can get the, uh, the enrollment in, this, in the StopFinder app increase. We get more families on board with that. And then also getting more kids using scanning on and off the bus. I did want to report that we have about 45, between 45 and 5,000 kids that are riding the bus. Um, that's about for the total for the district. But since the 1st of April, so just what's today, the night, so eight days ago, um, we increased our stop finder subscriptions have doubled. They went from, from 250 to over 500 stop finder subscriptions in the last eight days. So the outreach is starting to work. Um, thanks to the comms team, they sent out some social media blasts. Um, I did a piece today for the for the Sun Gazette newspaper. So we're getting some good press on that, that the newspaper thinks that it's really a good system. And so we're trying to get the word out for, for families to continue to enroll in that. Um, additionally, um, our students that are consistently scanning on and off the bus is now approaching 30% of all of our students that are riding are consistently scanning on it. So that's not just the special ed routes, that's the gen ed routes too. So lots of good improvement there. We did learn that implement implementation is not something that this district always did a good job with. So we're taking our time to make sure that we embed this in our culture and that our kids know that they get on the bus, they scan, the parents know the reason they're scanning is how now they can see where the student is, where the route is, if it's going to be late, if there's a detour or something. So we're starting to really get some traction on that. So we're really pleased with the implementation so far. And um, and then the long range facility master plan. Last thing on that, the 25th is our final working group meeting. We'll be pulling together um, the final kind of list of all the menu items that we'll be ready to bring and share with the, the board and then in preparation to taking it out to the community. So we're really excited with that. There's some big numbers. There's some really interesting stuff. It's, it's really been a lot of fun, but really hard work. So we're looking forward to bringing that forward. And then nutritional services, Regina continues to uh, be the one with the most money, it seems like in our division, she's continuing to put in ovens and new equipment. And so our kitchens are being updated. Uh, thank you to her for that. And then recruiting and retaining our, our, uh, our, our professional work staff we're working with HRD on that as well. So with that, I think I turn it over to Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, sir. So in the superintendent's office and communications, um, we have a very brief report tonight because we just brought the quarter two report to you last month. So we're gonna have a, have a much smaller report for you tonight. Um, so in the superintendent's office, um, he's been averaging a little over a visit a week. That does not include all the listening sessions that we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, and in our communications team, we've been slowly shifting our focus away from just the building of followers, trying trying to get people to listen to us, to now shifting to being a stronger, more consistent voice for the district, for both our followers and our constituents. And then within our outreach efforts, um, we focused on the advisories as we refine feedback that we've received regarding the strategic plan and the long range facilities master plan. So we continue to refine those feedback sessions. And then lastly, with our improvement steps. Um, so we continue to hold regular advisory meetings to seek feedback from the stakeholder groups. And then continuing with the superintendent's site connection visit so far, um, he's been able to complete nine of those as one more this week. Um, looking forward to getting more feedback from our various school sites. And then also working with Mr. Kerr's office to help in the development of long range facility master plan listening sessions. Um, with both branding and to create a consistent look and feel for the VUSD 2030, Forward 2030 program um, so that we can link all those pieces together. And then we continue with our development of our social media calendar to facilitate the best messaging cycle for our district and community so we don't get overlap and we don't flood people on one day and then nothing on the following day. So we've been trying to pace things out so that we can regularly communicate with folks um, and we can highlight certain things on given days. And then our Visalia Voices podcast, this last, well, in January, the last one we did, highlighted kindness as a theme. You saw um, one of our students get recognized by the county for kindness. Um, it's showcasing our staff and student voices on how kindness plays a key role 
in all of our success. And then finally, working with our consultants and the direction from the board, we continue to prepare for the initial communication plan for our strategic plan, which should be available to the public within the next week or so. And with that, I'll turn over questions to any of my peers and they can answer them. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Any questions from the board? Uh, I've just a comment. I'm really excited to see uh, the fact that our expulsions are down by almost half compared to last year in quarter three. So, you know, kudos to all of our, our staff across the district for engaging uh, in practices to make sure our students are making the right decisions and right choices in schools. And, you know, excited to hear about um, how we can continue to improve on, on working on cutting down those suspensions. So thank you. Definitely. Um, one question, Mr. Thompson. So you mentioned that I ready um, ELA data will come back. Will math come back at that point too? Okay. Um, awesome. And then um, just to highlight, I mean, it was a, it's a number up there that we went quickly through. Um, the chronically absent was down from 22, like 0.8% to 14%. And I know board member Kay spears was also um, had sent me a podcast about chronically absent. Like, when we look at that number, that just seems like a percentage, but that's if, you know, my common core math works, that's like 2,400 students, um, when you really think about that, that were no longer chronically absent. So thank you to our APs, our school sites, the teachers that reach out, your team, Andy, and um, because that's a lot of kids um, that were here um, on a more regular basis. So thank you for those efforts. I know it's not easy. I know it's a problem that all schools um, statewide, nationwide are dealing with. So thank you a lot. Yeah. And just kudos on that attendance thing to uh, Jim Sullivan and his team. So thank you. Okay. That was information only. General public comment. Uh, general public comment on any school related topic may be heard at this time. The board asks that any public comment on any item listed on tonight's agenda be addressed at the time the item comes up for discussion by the board. To comply with the Brown Act, California's open public meeting law, board discussion is limited to items on the agenda. Therefore, when receiving public comment on items not listed on the agenda, the board's role is limited to receiving such comments and the board may not engage in dialogue with the public. The board thanks the public for its participation in public comment and understanding of the board's responsibility. Pursuant to board policy, the board will limit individual comments to no more than three minutes and individual topics to 20 minutes. It is recommended you begin your comments by stating your name. I do have a few um, requests to speak for him. Um, I'd like to invite Dominic Messia. Up. Thank you. Is it fine if I have a uh, uh, of Yes, is this Riley, yes, Amos, and Benjamin as well? Yes. Okay, awesome. And yes, if you don't mind though, just step up to the mic so we can hear you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Riley Amos. I'm the captain of um, Redwoods Robotics Team, r -Cubed. What? Okay. We are a first year team in a competition called FRC, First Robotics Competition. It's the most advanced STEM program available to high schoolers. They can learn skills like teamwork, time management, and problem solving to a far greater extent than in school. <clears throat> we have always wanted this team for, um, we've wanted this team for a really long time, and I'm really glad that we have it now. Another team from UPHS called Our Robotics helped us um, begin this team. Then after that, our coach, Mr. Alcatab, gave us materials and, ad and advice. He drove down three to four times a week from Fresno to meet with us and spent his own money to help us. Um, our other coach, Mr. Brown, was able to get us $6,000 from a grant from NASA, and that's how we were able to register. We want to keep this momentum going. We also want to um, invite members from Mount Whitney to join us so that we can share this experience. Mr. Brown and Mr. Alcatab can't keep supporting the team to the extent they did next year. Um, we need the district support to be able to continue this. We need um, financial aid and people who are willing to coach us, willing and able to coach us. Hi. Mr. Boone, we can start the time again. Hi, my name is Dominic Messia. I'm a senior at Redwood High School and I'm also in the robotics club. 
I'm also in the ACE Academy, so that's why I'm here helping today. Um, as my friend Riley has mentioned, we are looking and for able and willing personnel to help mentor our team in the future. And as Riley has also mentioned, we currently has received 6,000, a grant of $6,000 from NASA. And $6,000 only gets us so far. For registration for one competition, $6,000 is required. For another competition, it's another $3,000. On top of that, we need to purchase food and hotels for traveling. That would require another $5,000 or I, excuse me, another $3,000 just for that. And then on top of that, we ask for another $5,000 just simply for our robot and building season, just to cover all the expenses that Mr. Alkatov and Mr. Brown have put in in this past season. We don't want to have to put anyone else through the financial uh, burden of carrying our, of purchasing our parts. We want to be able to purchase those ourselves and raise that money um, ourselves so we don't have to so we can actually do things for ourselves as a team. Um, so again, I asked the board for ABLE personnel and for any financial support that you all are willing to provide. And I would be very grateful. All of us would be very grateful for any help. Hello, my name is Benjamin Peacock. I am also on the robotics team. I would like to add on a personal note that this program is one of, if not the best, after school programs available at Redwood High School. ET. For the individual student, it, it grants many, it places them in a realistic scenario that cannot be achieved in a normal traditional classroom setting. I have personally done everything from accounting to manual labor, mechanical design to team management. Give me one second, please. That is everything I wrote down. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I hear you have an award. This is, sorry. <laughs> this is the Rookie Inspiration Award. Award We got at Central Valley Regional a month ago at the Fresno Fairgrounds. We won this award. We stood out from the other three participating rookie teams in one thing we did specifically. Every part on our frame was not bought, but machined by us. We made everything by hand, and no other team was able to put that much effort into their robot. Thank you. Thank you. Super impressive. <laughs> OK, um, let me see if I'll say it right, Olivia. From VTech FFA, I will let you say your name so that I don't kill it. <laughs> Good evening, board members and guests. My name is Olivia Lamarzna from VTech High School, and I am the VTech FFA chapter reporter. And this is Kelly Christie. She's our VTech FFA chapter treasurer. I just wanted to start off by saying how thankful and excited we are as a chapter to have won the California FFA National Chapter Award. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I would also like to let the board know that tomorrow evening is the sectional state degree banquet where 20 of our members will be, will be receiving their star farmer degrees. 14 students will be receiving a sectional proficiency award with six of them being sectional winners. And one of the sectional winners named Maury Stidman went on to win at region then placed third at state. We also have all our advisors getting Golden Owl Awards, and one of our advisors, Mr. Wyrick, will be receiving a award as the sectional winner. To wrap up, I would like to invite you to attend our chapter banquet on May 7th, where we will be recognizing members and their accomplishments. We would also like to invite you to our GOAT Yoga, which is on May 24th. Uh, is it okay if I walk up and give you guys invitations? Yes. Next time you could even bring the goats. Thank you. 
Thank you. And really the recognitions here are amazing. And that's really you know, the most exciting part. And Leticia Cervantes. Hi, my name is Leticia Cervantes and I am Vice President of the Chair Booster Board at LDA Monsey High School. I would like to start off by expressing my concern with the lack of financial accountability at LDA Monsey High School. After requesting an investigation be done on the Chair Booster financial accounts, because of the lack of financial transparency, I met with Ms. Nelson to discuss some of my concerns. During this meeting, she, she explained to me there was a process that Chair Coach Tracy has to go through to pull money out from the account. I asked her to please explain this process to me. She stated that Tracy had to fill out paperwork explaining the reason for withdrawing the money to the chair, from the chair account. The paperwork then go, gets presented to the minor foundation for approval. Then Ms. Nelson herself signs off for final approval. I told her this didn't seem like a very hard process and asked if she could please explain the process in confirming Tracy did in fact spend the money on what she claimed she was going to spend it on. How long does she have to submit invoices or receipts? I was given a blank stare and silence. I asked Ms. Nelson to please tell me they confirm and collect receipts. She then confirmed that the minor foundation does not follow up and collect any receipts. This was supposed to be done by the treasurer of the chair booster board and she had failed to do so. Ms. Nelson said that the treasurer wasn't aware she was supposed to be tracking the finances or collecting the receipts. Shocking, right? A treasurer not knowing she was responsible in tracking the financials. Then again, this was a trusted parent who was placed in this position by Tracy herself and not elected as it should have been. This is beyond ridiculous and disappointing to say the least. The fact that a coach has been pulling money out of an account with zero financial accountability is unacceptable. This is a broken system and the public deserves to know how Visalia Unified School District plans to fix this. I like to discuss a gold card fundraiser that was brought to my attention by many parents and cheer girls, both past and present. What I was told by many is that Tracy presented a gold card fundraiser to both parents and cheer girls as a way to earn money that would go towards their individual accounts to offset the cost of their uniforms. Many parents and cheerleaders participated in this fundraiser for this reason. Sadly, these parents never saw these credits. And we're left questioning where their three, four, five hundred dollar credits were. This was brought to Dr. Watamura and Ms. Nelson's attention, and no follow-up was done. When when parents questioned Tracy, she was she told them the football booster program messed up and never gave them the money they earned. I have already confirmed with the football booster program this was a lie. The cheer program did receive eight thousand dollars towards this fundraiser. The parents just never received their credits. Tracy chose to spend the money how she wanted to spend it instead of how it was presented and promised to parents and cheer girls. Again, this is unacceptable. Thank you. Are there any more public comment? Seeing none, I'll move to consent agenda. Would any board member like to pull any item from consent? If not, may I have a motion to approve consent? I'll motion. On a motion by board member Case Pierce Solano and a second by board member Gamoyan. Call for a vote. Student board member votes yes. Motion passes unanimously 7 0. All right, um, I'd like again to welcome uh, Ms. Megan Donnelly and um, ask you for your report tonight. This is uh, your first and only meetings, but um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, starting off, we have um, LD Monte High School. The Western Association of Schools and Colleges is coming to LD Monte in the week of April 8th through 12th. The Western Association of Schools and Colleges team will accredit the school based on their visit. El Diamante Winter Guard made school history as the first ever team crowned champions in the, their division in the South Valley, Valley Winter Arts Association Championships in Lemoore. 
El Diamante is preparing to send their ASB junior class to a three-day conference in Ontario. At the conference, students will learn leadership skills and ways to improve their school. The El Diamante In Motion dance team is preparing for their annual spring dance show, Waves, held April 18th and 19th at the LJ Williams. Um, as for Golden West High School, um, Golden West Drama Program is completing the final preparations for our musical this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They will be performing Newsies. Golden West ASB is beginning to prepare for their upcoming lunchtime activities of a 3v3 basketball tournament. Students will be signing up for this event with their teams and will begin the tournament next week. Golden West ASB officer elections are coming up quickly. We have added five new positions to the mix and to help increase our student engagement and control on events that are happening around campus. Golden West spring sports have begun and our trailblazers are off to a great start. Golden West ASB has loved celebrating all of our seniors and varsity teams with luncheon mini rallies um, going all out for senior nights. Uh, moving on to Mount Whitney High School. Mount Whitney had three students compete in the Skills USA Culinary Cooking Competition in Southern California this past week. One was in culinary arts and the other two were in baking and pastry competition. Come out this Friday as our Mount Whitney track team will host a very special event to honor Mount Whitney's own fallen hero, Jared Verbeek, was killed in action. Um, so they're going to remember him uh, every year. They hold a uh, track invitational to honor our national military veterans. This meet is from 4 to 7.30 at Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney Drama will be doing their spring performance April 19th and 20th, and they will be performing one act at the Rotary Theater. April 25th will be an annual Powder Puff game. The girls are looking to show off their skills in flag football while being coached by the Pioneer football players. Uh, moving on to Redwood High School. Redwood is hosting a school-wide talent show this Thursday where students can perform their own unique talents. This is going to be in the Rotary Theater and is completely free for students as well as the public. Redwood has had their annual Powder Puff game in the Mineral King Bowl where student or where the junior and senior students um, compete in flag football game. It will be held on Wednesday, April 17th. Boys from the football team are the coaches and have already begun practice. Over spring break, Redwood Robotics attended the Central Valley Regionals Tournament in Fresno. They participated amongst 41 teams and received the Rookie Inspiration Award. Redwood held the Mr. and Mrs. Ranger tradition last week where the top five girls and guys competed and were judged by teachers based on numerous categories, including dress-up days, attitude, and school spirit. Moving on to Sequoia. Sequoia High School took their senior pictures this week on April 8th. Sequoia High School has done their iReady testing. On April 8th, students and teachers at Sequoia also took a uh, campus drone picture. On the 10th, Sequoia will be holding their ASVAP testing. Moving on to VCIS. VCIS will be hosting open house on Thursday, April 18th. We are inviting all incoming ninth graders to visit our VCIS campus and see all the great opportunities available. VCIS ASB will also be giving tours to parents and incoming students who are interested. VCIS College and Careers Department is offering workshops to assist students in signing up for summer and fall classes at COS. Schedule COS counseling appointments and help in competing or completing the FOSFA. FOSFA. Um, School-wide map testing to show um, Learner growth will be taking place uh, the week of April 22nd. The marine biology classroom took a um, group of students to the Monterey Bay Aquarium on Friday, April 5th. Um, they got to explore the tide pools, show what they've learned, and even got to visit the um, CSU Monterey Bay campus and take a tour. VCIS will be volunteering at the Mi Miracle League on Friday evening 
May 3rd. It is a great opportunity to give back to our local community. Moving on to VTech. Uh, 120 VTech students, approximately 50%, were honored at the Academic Awards Assembly on April 5th, 2024, for having a 3.3 or higher GPA. VTech seniors who completed their FOSFA college applications and scholarship applications entered into a drawing for one of the prizes, which was a free entrance to Disneyland grad night. VTech ASB continues to build culture through their variety of engaging activities. Last month, they had a competition for being lucky on St. Patrick's Day. VTech FFA is the national chapter award winner for California 2024. They outpaced 345 other chapters. Um, uh, for LD Monte High School, they, this is the last one. <laughs> okay, that concludes the um, board report for uh, student board report. <laughs> Thank you. All right, board member report. Um, oh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Viegas. <laughs> Uh, thank you, President Gaby. I had the opportunity to attend the South Valley Winter Arts Association Championships this last Sunday, uh, where our schools were very well represented, had some amazing performances. So just wanted to give uh, a shout out to all the students, of course, uh, the coaches, uh, band directors, and parents who really worked together to make that reality happen uh, and to give that you know moment and spotlight to all of our performers. So congratulations on an amazing season uh, to everybody across the district. I also wanted to wish everybody a happy high school voter education awareness week slash month uh, designated by our California Secretary of State. This month is really dedicated to uh, making sure we're encouraging students across the district and across the state of California to register and now pre-register to vote, which now you can do at the age of 15 and a half. So 16 and 17 years old doesn't mean you can vote. You still have to wait until you turn 18. But as long as you pre-register, you're good to go and you will receive your ballot uh, once you turn 18. So I really want to encourage, um, you know, all of our staff across the district to engage in activities, to encourage participation. I know uh, we've had several groups and, and nonpartisan organizations like the League of Women Voters who do classroom presentations, uh, who actively actively encourage and register students to vote. And so um, I know right now that's that's kind of on a teacher discretion. And so I want to encourage teachers to open up your classrooms, to have conversations with students, uh, to help guide them through that process, to encourage them to let their voices be heard in our democracy. Um, and, you know, I also want our district to really look at partnering with organizations to make sure that every single student has that opportunity to register to vote, regardless of what high school you're at um, or, or who your teacher is. Uh, so looking forward to hopefully seeing that highlighted in next month's, you know, um, good spotlight, you know, things happening in the district. Um, I also wanted to highlight, uh, we had a great presentation, um, you know, today talking about COS and, and board president or our president Calvin, along with board president, uh, Raymond Macareno, um, COS's ethnic studies department has obtained funding to have a training, uh, professional development opportunity for all their professors, uh, through a grant that they obtained and they're gracious enough to have opened up that opportunity to all of our VUSD ethnic studies teachers later this month. And so I'm really, really excited and happy to hear that. And I hope that, you know, we're able to do everything we can to make sure our teachers are able to take advantage of that opportunity so we can continue this partnership with COS and expanding ethnic studies across our district um, and hopefully also increasing dual enrollment opportunities for our students um, as well. And so uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Odo. No report. Board member Bill. Thank you, President Gaby. The um, the evening at the Doc Band, which was as health uh, professionals with students, was also highlighted a Golden West graduate who first went to law school and then decided to become a doctor. And it was quite inspiring for all those students that were there to actually hear someone local, as well as all of the table hosts that were uh, drilled on how they do what they do. I wonderfully attended two different dance shows. Summer Column, Caitlin Martin from Golden West, uh, Kelly, uh, oh, I was forgetting her, Ari, yes, thank you, Ariella, uh, and her assistant is Bella Rodriguez Cuervas. I have, I, I didn't realize we had over 300 participants in both of those dance 
opportunities. It's become not only uh, a great opportunity of connection like we've talked about, but has reached a whole new level. Uh, back in the day, I remember when uh, there was only one school in town that actually had such high level. Now we have all four of our high schools making those kind of offerings. The uh, host, and this makes me feel very old because she went to school with my sons and now she's a principal. Uh, Carly Hawkins hosted us at the VCS, VCIS construction site. And another one of our VUSD employees who I've known since she was born what is the director, or what do you call her, Eric? The uh, uh, oversight, Jennifer. What is her project manager? Thank you. And what was absolutely amazing is that this building, which some people thought it's not happening, the transformation of the previous Grace Community Church into the new VCIS campus is going to be phenomenal. Uh, there's been lots of hurdles for them to work around and work through, but it is going to be uh, a premier uh, optional and creative school site for 600 plus students. Is that right, Carly? And we were wonderfully able to see all of those walk through. I guess we could have even carved our name into the uh, the struts, the studs there if we wanted to, because it's here's the office, here's where the lab will be, uh, extremely well thought through and will be custom made for them. And then we went over to VCIS campus on the West Campus, and I saw my first time what a corrections department is. I, I had no idea that students could actually come every morning uh, or throughout the day and correct papers that they have been working on. They assess themselves as to uh, what they need to make changes with. Uh, some extremely creative interaction that's happening at VCIS. Thanks so much, Carly. Then the host uh, at Linwood, Mr. Yates, took Mr. Uh, Shrum and myself around and not only probably the most creative hype. Hy it's the water thing you cycle. Hy hy hyponic? Hy I can't even say it correctly. Thank you. Hydroponic. There you go. They actually have fish who are actually living, and then they cycle their stuff so that they actually have fertilizer for the plants that are growing. And this is all done through a grant that they wrote in the sixth grade, and these three teachers are seamlessly, well, wonderfully connecting everything they do in school, writing, math, science into this project as well. So we saw that choir, band, all playing interactive things and probably the best school garden I've seen that they were embarrassed that it had weeds growing, but it was very, very robust. VTech, we went to then uh, yesterday afternoon and again, I had to go back and get my camera out of my car that I forgot to take the pictures of the pygmy goats for my wife. Um, but again, the welding program, the literally hands-on things that we're doing at VTech to help young people actually look at career in college at a very early time frame. I'm glad that they're there. I also attended Sequoia High School's team takeover. And not only did they have so many different things for students to see. The adult school was there. The uh, Milan Institute was there. You had uh, the California, uh, uh, yeah, armed guard. What do you call it? National guard. Thank you. Man, I can't think of it. Uh, but they also had a, um, a school, a barbering school. The East West Coast Barbering School was giving free haircuts. So I wandered by there just to see what they were doing and found out that this one of the instructors also likes to cut longer hair, not just with the razor stuff. And so I, I got more than just seeing how they're encouraging students to look at future opportunities, look at where they could actually go. But I got my hair trimmed then that next week from a very, very talented instructor. So I thank Adrian for that. The Redwood Academic Building is the last thing I want to address. We we're aware that there's been a petition to rename an academic building at Redwood. And what was interesting to me is that as I started doing some research into the first African-American high school graduate in Visalia, I started to see that actually his dad was the, pay, was the pathfinder 
he actually took the state of California to court to have no longer the African-American or back in the day, the Negro school in Visalia, which I didn't know existed. So as a thing I'd like to throw out, we not only should applaud the opportunity to do something like that, but maybe even have it just be the last name because not only the student first graduate should be remembered, but the family who actually were the trailblazers, oh, sorry, rangers of the rest of the state of California back in the day. Thank you, board member Case Pierce Solano. I know I normally say no report, but I'm gonna be really fast, I promise. Um, I wanted to highlight a really fun event that my family went to. We went to see the free showing of Wizard of Oz that was put on. I think it was an ELOP thing. I, I apologize that I didn't fully flush that out before saying this, um, but it was so fabulous. There were so many uh, families there. It was wonderful as a mother of three small children to go into a movie theater where kids could whisper and laugh and ask for more snacks and nobody was offended whatsoever. Um, I also myself have seen The Wizard of Oz countless times but have never seen it on the big screen and that was pretty cool for me as well um, but all in all it was just it was a Saturday it was a really great event there was just so so many families and kids there um, and just well well done so thank you for that um, and then lastly I just wanted to highlight something that I think is pretty cool uh, in Visalia and and how we really kind of are able to connect our students, and that is that tomorrow I'm, I'm actually participating in an event with the Redwood Law Academy um, where they're coming to the courthouse. And this all sort of came about because um, a group of attorneys in my office were like, hey, we really need to do practice for jury selection. And in our line of field, it's called voir dire. Um, so practicing our voir dire. And it wasn't me. I had nothing to do with setting this up. Um, I don't even think they know that I'm participating in this tomorrow. Um, but they were like, what about those high school students who are in the law academy? Um, and they, we were able to make that contact and able to get a courtroom. And we have about 40 students coming tomorrow. And they're just there to help us as professionals practice. And so I just think it's really cool that we've been able to, the USD has been able to build those connections and people know about those academies. So if you're in the industry as, as I am, um, it comes to people's minds and they're able to say, well, maybe we can make that connection happen. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to that tomorrow. So um, that is all. That's very cool. All right, board member Gamoyan. I don't think I wanna see those flying monkeys on a big screen. <laughs> They terrified me as a child. Um, I want to uh, invite everybody to the Visoya Ed Foundation dinner this Saturday. The roundup, it's on the barn on the Shirk. And the Visalia Ed Foundation does a lot for our school district. They do the band showcase. They give mini grants. They give scholarships to kids. So if you can come out and have a good time on Saturday night, that'd be great. Um, and I just want to congratulate the teachers and administrator who um, were um, recognized um, tonight. And it almost brought tears to my eyes because, in my opinion, there is no better profession than teaching. So thank you. Uh, board Clerk Knaylor. Yeah, I'll try to make mine short also. I um, just want to welcome all staff back from our uh, spring break. I hope they had a restful week and hitting the ground um, fast and, and hard because we've got, what, six, five, five weeks left before uh, school ends. So um, thank you. Uh, also, I just want to, I, I attended the Special Olympics, and I, I don't think I said enough about it last time that um, when we talked about it, it was just so heartwarming to go out to Golden West Field and see all of the staff, the students, parents, um, and our administrators out there supporting our special uh, special ed students in the Olympics. And it just, it was a perfect day. The weather was amazing. And it was just nice to see how the excitement on their faces as they participated and received those medals and those honors for winning a race or for um, winning the high jump. So I just want to thank all the staff that was involved in that event because it was well-organized and well-planned. Um, also, El Diamante Orchestra, I don't know if we said this enough, but they did an amazing job. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. And thank you 
also, um, Melanie, for being here. Uh, I mean, Megan, for being here on your first um, board meeting. You did an amazing job. Um, and then last but not least, Mountain View. Uh, we have our uh, dual immersion program there and visited that. This is the second time. And every time I'm just so impressed of our students and how they're all speaking Spanish and they're just the little guys and they understand it and they're just all attentive. And so they're doing a, an amazing job at that dual immersion program. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had no report, but I'll add one little thing um, on this, the Special Olympics, because I didn't realize this either, but it is more than even just the track event. I know um, that my daughter coached a bowling team and the students beat the El Diamante students. They were much better bowlers. Um, um, but I didn't realize there's a lot of events um, that we host and that's really cool. So with that, superintendent's report. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Echoing all of that, want to make a couple of uh, comments. One, we are in the last, you know, part of our school year, and so how important it is to stay focused so that we can all finish strong. And we'll be talking about different ways students and staff and all of that can do that in our next uh, few weeks to keep everybody focused on that finish line. This is that time, graduation weeks away. So, family, students, be listening to directions. Don't miss deadlines. All of those things are so important because. You miss deadlines for certain things, applications, others, you know, you miss out. And so you've got to be attuned to all of those things, listening to those announcements, reading your emails, all of those important things to finish strong um, as we enter graduation season. Also want to mention there was an item um, on uh, the consent agenda tonight that has been a long time coming. And I want to give a, a shout out to Eric Kerr and his team. Uh, we know that Redwood has been needing a PA system uh, for a lot of different reasons, and that's been a long time coming. And uh, as the board's aware tonight, that uh, scope and, and item was approved. And so we look for that to be uh, implemented over the summer. And so we're really excited about that. And I hope word gets back to uh, the Redwood staff and students. And then finally, I want to take a moment to recognize uh, the passing of one of our board members, uh, former board members, Dr. Robert Aguilar, passed away recently, a uh, longtime system employee, and of course, a board member, uh, and community member in our district. And so just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that uh, and send our thoughts and prayers to uh, that family. That concludes my report. Thank you. All right, recommended expulsions. May I have a motion to approve the recommended expulsions? I'll motion. On a motion by board member Case Pierce Leno Sorry. and a second by Dr. Odo. Student board member abstains, motion passes 7-0. Recommended suspended expulsions. May I have a motion to approve the recommended suspended expulsions? A well, second. On a motion by board member Gamoyan and a second by Dr. Viegas. Student board member abstains, motion passes 7-0. Um, uh, recommended review, continued expulsions. May I have a motion to approve the recommended continued expulsions? I'll motion. I'll second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On a motion by board member Case pierce Salano and a second by Dr. Odo. Student board rep abstains, motion passes 7-0. All right, item 14.1 of the adoption of instructional materials for high school. Um, we have the Medical Assistant, Academy of Law and Justice, Academy of Education, AP Spanish Lit, and AP Spanish Language. Our first reading, Administrator of Teaching and Learning, Brianne Phillips. Good evening, Board President Gaby, Superintendent Shum, board members, and the community. Um, I'm here tonight to bring the first read of our adoptions from the Teaching and Learning Department. So uh, through our adoption process, we keep our core beliefs and commitments at the center of our decision making, focusing on all students achieving at high levels and de demonstrating continuous growth. Our adoptions equip our students and staff with the educational tools necessary for achievement and growth. Through our collaborative adoption process, future training of teachers and intentional implementation plans, we are setting the conditions for the success of our learners. As mentioned, the programs that we're bringing for First Read tonight are Medical Assistance Program, Academy of Law and Justice, Academy of Education, our AP Spanish Language and Culture, as well as our AP 
um, literature and culture. So this slide we bring to you every time we go through an adoption process. This is the process that the teaching and learning department follows. We begin by um, creating an adoption committee that is composed of teachers, district staff, um, and other leadership. With that district lens, we begin by developing a district lens using the California um, state teaching frameworks, the state standards, as well as our priority standards to identify what types of programs we're looking for through an adoption. We send out what's called a request for quote um, to take out any bias in um, programmings that come in for review. When the programs come in for review, we undergo a paper screening to refine down um, what programs come in that align with the lens that the district developed. From there, um, we invite programs in, we bring our publishers in, and we go through a, a paper screening with the full committee. So our full committee engages in a paper screening um, after a publisher showcase. From there, typically one to two programs are selected to move on to pilot, and we begin our pilot. We typically do four to six weeks, um, and our teachers that are on the committees are our piloting committees. And then from there, we bring a selection forward for first read um, prior to our first read and often between our first read and our second read, all of our materials are on public display in the VLC. We do send Blackboard messages out to the community when those go out to public display. Our first program that we're going to bring forward for first read is our medical assistance program. This textbook is um, the current edition of our current textbook. The um, Typically we would do a textbook extension. Um, however, the publisher no longer supports the edition that we currently have. And so we do have to bring forward a new textbook and we want to make sure we're bringing forward the most current as we know the medical field is ever changing and we want to make sure that we are bringing for forward the most current edition. With our Academy of Law and Justice in December we approved new course outlines if you recall um, and at that time we had our RFQ out and received all of the materials. From there the teams are piloted the materials in February and then um, they're currently up for public display and we're, today we're here for our first read. There are two books that are coming forward, the first being Street Law. Our students did give us feedback on this, as you can see. Um, they rated it at, on the ease of use, which was a 4.3 out of a scale of five, as well as access to vocabulary of a 4.6 on a scale of five. The second book that is coming for recommendation is the introduction to law. And the student feedback was slightly different on this as we were gauging the overall level of challenge as a 4.11 on a scale of five and authenticity of articles, which is a 4.5 on a scale of five. Our Academy of Education, we know is a new academy that is launching next year that we're really excited about. Similarly, in December, we um, we approved our first course um, through the course outlines. During that time, again, the RFQ was out for um, any textbooks um, to be sent to us. We had to engage in a student review differently though, because we don't have students in the program. So what we did do is on signing day, we had our textbooks out for the students to review and to give us feedback. Um, and that happened in February. So our incoming students did get to have an input on the text that they'll be utilizing. Um, we can don't have a program to pilot um, because there is no program in place. So we will be launching this without a, without a pilot. Um, they are on current display and we are recommending those who can teach. Um, this will include different PowerPoints, test question banks, rubrics, and online resources as well. And then our AP Spanish language and AP Spanish literature follow the same adoption timeline. We did send out an RFQ in December, um, and our current um, pilot is wrapping up this month. Um, within our um, textbooks, 
I'm sorry. So they're wrapping up this month and the two texts that they, um, that they piloted or, and that we're bringing forward. So for AP Spanish language, it's temas. And with this, it is a seven year adoption. It will include our t digital licenses, student hardcover edition, student digital license, student AP exam prep consumables. We have had our training on this as our adoption committee is composed of all of the AP teachers. So they've already received their training, but we will provide ongoing PD provided at um, provided through our district as well as at AP conferences. And the final book um, that we are recommending for AP Spanish literature is Azulejo. Um, and this text similarly um, has the same um, constraints within um, the Temas um, book as well. So ongoing PD, um, and again, the teachers all have been trained as they were all on the adoption committee. With that, that concludes the books that we are bringing forward for our first read. Are there any questions? Is there any public comment? Any board member comments? I had a quick comment, and that is that I totally forgot until this very moment that I taught street law in law school to high school students twice a week for a semester, and that is exactly not that exact one. I think it was an older version, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was a fabulous textbook, so, uh, you know. Things to remember. Wonderful. <laughs> well, this is the 10th edition. Do we ask what edition? Yeah, I don't remember, um, and I hope <laughs> that you sir, even if I did. <laughs> So do we have two textbooks for law and justice? Is yes, that okay? There are that, two different textbooks. Awesome. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank this you. is not an action item. It's a first read only. I will now open the public hearing to um, allow for public comment on the consideration of a minimum school day waiver for Creekside Community Day School. Chief Business Officer Nathan Hernandez. Good evening, President Gaby, members of the board and Superintendent Shrum. So this is a public hearing to allow or to request the board to approve um, a waiver submission to the California Department of Education for the waiver of instructional minutes for Creekside Community Day School. Um, as a day school, they have minimum day requirements of 360 minutes. And so there are no, um, uh, there are no allowances for them to have a, a school day uh, less than that. And so there are days, uh, our minimum days that we have on Mondays throughout the year, as well as our PLC Monday late starts um, where the school does not meet the 360 minutes. And so we're requesting the waiver from CDE for the current fiscal year, as well as next fiscal year. Uh, we'll have to do this again in two years, uh, following the two two-year cycles, and we'll be able to request a permanent waiver for the school. Um, and the waiver has been supported by the school sites council, and we have received uh, support from both of our union groups at this time. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Any board member comments? Then I will now close the public hearing and reconvene the regular session. And may I have a motion to approve the submission of the waiver for the 2023-24 and 24-25 school years to the State Board of Education for Creekside Community Day School. I'll second on a motion by Board Member Gamoy and a second by Board Member Gaby. Student board rep votes yes. Motion passes 7 0. Approval of PAR's supplementary retirement plan. Oh, he's still there. Chief Business Officer Nathan Hernandez. Thank you. I'm back. Um, so <laughs> this is a request for the board to approve the uh, the final the supplementary retirement program through uh, PARS, the Public Agency Retirement Services. We did have 140 um, employees participate in the program and enroll in the program. Um, and I can uh, verify that the program does meet the fiscal and operational objectives that we set to move this program forward. And so we are requesting that the board take action to approve at this time. Is there any public comment? Any board comment? May I have a motion to approve the authorization of the PAR supplementary retirement plan? So moved. <laughs> Ready for it. I'll second, second it. On uh, a motion by board member Naylor and a second by board member Belt. Student rep votes yes. Motion passes 7 0. 
All right. Neighborhood Church Surplus Property Purchase Agreement. Chief Operations Officer Eric Kier. Good evening, President Gaby, Superintendent Shrum, members of the board. Um, if you recall back in early 2023, Neighborhood Church approached the district um, on the possibility of purchasing a portion of Neighborhood Park, which is next door to Houston Elementary, uh, for the purpose of building a, a community center. And so this is a purchase sale agreement to... Next word. There we go. Um, so um, the purchase, the uh, we did the process taking it out to the um, to the groups, the government agencies. We didn't receive any responses from any agencies, and so we moved forward with the purchase process with them. Um, mm -hmm. As you can see, this is 0.67 acres um, up against the common wall with the Visalia Cemetery, and the at the very back of um, neighborhood park. You can see Houston Elementary to the top of the screen. Um, it's about less than 30,000 square feet, and it's currently used as, you know, part of the field. So their proposal is to, um, to purchase that property um, for the price of $87,500. Um, and we are urging um, approval of that. And then we will, pro we will continue with the, the, um, the escrow process and then sell that property and they intend to build a community center there. Awesome. Is there any public comment? Any board member comments? May I have a motion to approve the property sales agreement? I'll motion. On a motion by board member Case Pierceleno and a second by board member Gamoyan. Board rep votes yes. Motion passes unanimously 7-0. Thank you. A uh, revision to the 2024-25 board meeting list. Schedule additional board meeting date in December 2024. Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, Presenter, Superintendent Shrum. Thank you, Board President Gaby. <laughs> board members, uh, as you know, with our calendar, we realize that uh, by uh, some compliance pieces, we have to have our district board organizational meeting. It has to be held at a regular board meeting, but uh, given the timeline of things, that would not occur in time for our regularly scheduled uh, meeting in December, so we will be adding an additional regular board meeting for those purposes and, and other business on December 17th, uh, and this is for the board to approve uh, the revision to add an additional meeting in December. Is there any public comment? Um, any board member comments? May I have a motion to approve the revised 24-25 board meeting list? A motion. I'll, motion. I'll second. On a motion by Dr. Villegas and a second by Case Beer Saleno. School board rep votes yes. Motion passes unanimously 7-0. All right, in the warrant list, Chief Business Officer Nathan Hernandez. Good evening. This is our routine item, uh, action item to approve the warrant list for our warrants from February 23rd to March 22nd, 2024. May I have a mo Oh, is there any public comment? Any board comment? May I have a motion to approve the warrant list? Move to approve. Second. On a motion by Dr. Odin, a second by Case Beer Salino. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Student board rep votes yes. Uh, motion passes seven and one abstain. Six. six and one abstain. And one. I'm sorry, six and one abstain. <laughs> and with that, this meeting is now adjourned.